these words of Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of Independence, third president of the United States, founder of the University of Virginia, have a special meaning for colleges and universities today. The appeal to force is being answered by the youth of America. 1,500 colleges throughout the nation are being converted to the war effort. All branches of the armed forces need the trained minds of youth. In consultation with faculty and advisory officers, students are guided to the specialized training they need for war work. Virginia's Dawn Patrol, composed of voluntary students who are eager to equip themselves for advanced military training to follow. This is the spirit of young men today. Naval ROTC units throughout the country train thousands of students. Virginia cadets are taught the mathematical problems of navigation by experienced officers. Students learn military phrases and aviation terms to aid understanding at the many foreign fronts. Medical schools are turning out doctors and nurses faster than ever before. Today, military medicine is required by all medical students. Doctors in the making are signed for active service months ahead of graduation. Complete combat units are formed ready for the call to duty abroad. Blood banks and college hospitals supply valuable plasma to the many battlefronts. University facilities over the country are being used by the armed forces. In the Virginia Law School, for the first time, a class in military government is held. High-ranking officers study for future assignments to govern occupied territories. College aerodynamics departments supply many engineers to aviation plants. Well-equipped laboratories give training to future designers. Nearly 80,000 new flyers have already started their careers at 600 college airfields over the nation. This civilian pilot training course is now on a wartime basis. Though small, these planes give the students the feel of flying and are also used by the Army as observers to direct ground traffic and gunfire. Indiana's Purdue University, as seen from the air. Many heroes of today received their preliminary instruction at these college fields. Upon graduation, college flying classes often enter advanced training in squadrons to fly together in combat, taking the effective teamwork of American athletes to the dogfights in the air. Here, secret experimental work is sponsored by the government under the guidance of aeronautical engineers. It takes 36 men to keep each four-motored bomber flying. Ground school classes in colleges all over the country teach students the fundamentals of plane construction and the theory of flying. The world's largest and finest facilities for supplying trained manpower are pledged to meet our immediate and long-range war needs. Machines and the brains to direct these instruments of warfare win the wars of today. And these great mind power plants are meeting the challenge. Purdue engineer students get experience with the tools that produce war materials by actually making parts for war machines. Practice is combined with theory in this mechanical designing class. And this ordnance inspectors group sends men and women to the plants that produce our guns, tanks, and machines. Most engineer students are already enlisted in the armed forces. This Signal Corps group works with ultra-high frequencies for special training in the operation of plane and submarine detectors. There are now about 218,000 college students enrolled in the Army ROTC courses who are enlisted in some branch of the armed forces. These Purdue cadets are part of the largest college field artillery unit in the country. Long hours of practice with fully motorized equipment give students the training that makes them efficient at the battlefronts. When the full course is completed, they are ready for active duty as well-trained soldiers. Servicemen with books, now a common sight on the campus. At many colleges, the armed forces have stationed men to get specialized training. These sailors compete for higher ratings as electrician mates. Thousands of college women now volunteer for courses that train them for jobs vacated by men gone to war. Purdue co-eds take advantage of engineering equipment by learning how to operate communications offices. 
farm health is a problem that women will now be called upon more than ever to solve. These college girls want to be ready for duty at the home fronts. Many women's colleges are awake to the need of preparing for war work. They are guiding their courses to fit in the war program. Women are needed in all branches of aviation. Technical knowledge enables them to fill many jobs held exclusively by men before the war. Ferry pilots are needed and women can fill these important jobs. They too must take essential ground school instruction. The basic knowledge of flying helps them to staff the many airline ticket offices. Many men can be relieved of jobs in radio repair by trained women workers. Girls learn to staff radio stations as technicians, writers, and announcers. In the increasingly technical field of industrial and military service, colleges everywhere are designing courses to supply trained men and women. At the University of Texas, located in Austin, the state capital, petroleum engineering is naturally considered important. The petroleum needs of the United Nations are studied by students who will soon be ready for field assignments. This advanced class in aeronautics, added for the war effort, give students a thorough appreciation of what makes airplane motors work. Latin American relations are emphasized at Texas. This group is studying our mutual problems in order to promote better understanding of our southern neighbors. Students broadcast in Spanish to Central and South American countries from the campus radio station. Decoding and censorship agencies need people versed in the languages of our enemies. This group is learning Japanese. The science of nutrition is given special attention by the home economics department. Here, an advanced class is doing research work on the vitamin content of ordinary foodstuffs in an attempt to improve diets at home. Special classes like this drafting group have been added to train women for jobs in the war plants. And this university nursery class trains girls to relieve mothers for work at the industrial front. At Cornell University in New York State, the peaceful appearance of the campus has changed. More than a thousand new uniformed men have been added. Like Dartmouth, Notre Dame and Harvard, for example, Cornell is being used by the Navy to train recently commissioned civilians. Besides drill routine, they must learn naval regulations, organization and discipline Benson study the operation and maintenance of diesel motors for engineer duty on patrol boats. The Cornell ROTC unit learns how to use gunfire control instruments, how to establish the communication centers at battlefronts. The operation of portable equipment so important in fast moving troop maneuvers. Rolling stock must be kept in repair and these cadets practice on army trucks. The artillery unit drills for speed and precision. Learning how to make the instruments of war is a requirement of the engineering department. Here, high school teachers learn to make gliders to train students of the New York schools in the art of flying. Many college nutrition departments are contributing materially to solve the problem of better foods at lower cost. These Cornell students are working on methods to condense high vitamin foods for our troops. Knowing the languages of our allies hastens understanding. Experts on Latin America, the Far East, and the British Commonwealth meet in the Cornell workshop with selected high school teachers throughout the country to determine methods of spreading understanding of the United Nations. The colleges are adding new courses for war training and are putting new emphasis on old ones. For example, here at Tulane University in New Orleans, classes in meteorology and celestial navigation now teach students how a thousand bombers are charted on long raids to their objectives and safely home again. Aiming for duty with the armed forces, men in physics classes study the complex problems of aviation. Tulane's Green Wave Flying Unit. This group will train together in the Navy's advanced flying forces. The Naval ROTC learns how to train a gun on the enemy as part of the study of tactics and science of naval warfare. Army doctors study diseases of the tropics in Tulane's famed medical school. 
These officers will take care of our soldiers at the tropical fronts. Hampton Institute of Virginia offers many courses to train men and women for our war program. Trained nurses are in urgent demand. This group studies water pollution and methods of discovering it. The chemistry department is doing much research in the development of new war materials that will be more effective than any now known. In the well-equipped machine shops, students are turning out war materials while they learn. Workers from nearby shipyards, as well as advantage of one of the many step-up courses. Sailors, as well as soldiers, are sent to Hampton to take specialized courses. Dartmouth College at Hanover, New Hampshire, started as a school to teach Indians the principles for which we are now fighting. One of the special war courses added to the curriculum often meets on the steps of old Dartmouth Hall. This class prepares men for the military service they will soon enter. This course is designed to acquaint students with the causes of today's world problems and why we will continue to fight for democratic principles. One of the greatest contributions of the liberal arts colleges is the study of post-war problems. Experts in international affairs guide scientific thinking to the problems that will arise after peace is declared. The need of help at nearby New England farms is met by students who volunteer for part-time work. While they gain physical fitness, they help to meet the shortage of manpower. University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. In this war of alert, trained persons, students are learning the facts about the world in which we live. In the belief that too little is known about our great ally Brazil, these Portuguese-speaking scholars meet to discuss mutual problems. World regional planning teaches that the way to make a nation strong in war and in post-war reconstruction is to strengthen each region and to provide for a greater unity of national culture and economy. Like the universities of Georgia, Iowa, and St. Mary's, North Carolina houses the Naval Pre-Flight Training School. These hand-picked officers are former coaches and are out to make naval cadets the toughest flyers in the world. New arrivals are immediately given long hours of drill and in a few days are marching like veterans. One of the most popular parts of the training program is the engineer's unit. Physical fitness of all kinds is started early in the morning, and each student must compete in every event. Boxing teaches alertness. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, learning how to fight effectively at close quarters. Track meets strengthen leg muscles. The hard knocks of football toughens bodies. Swimming develops endurance. This program gives cadets confidence to meet any emergency. How to jump from a ship at sea. How to swim to safety under burning oil. Colleges all over the nation now emphasize physical fitness. Here at Harvard, students know the answer to accusations that we are soft. They are determined to prepare for their jobs in all ways. The fatigue laboratory studies reactions to physical exertion and extreme conditions under which human beings may work. It is at present almost entirely devoted to problems connected with the Army and Air Forces. The center of Chinese and Japanese studies is the Harvard Yenching Library, where our oriental relations get special attention. The famous Harvard Yard is now used by the naval officers for early morning assembly. Quartermaster cadets taking the advanced business administration course are stationed at Harvard for 16 months. In their studies, they learn how to run our many army camps and to supervise camp kitchens to see that our soldiers get the best of cooked foods. In the far west, the University of California Hundreds of universities now have a West Point and Annapolis-like appearance as they supplement the training of our great military academies. 
California has one of the largest and best equipped of the naval ROTC units. College laboratories are contributing new information and materials vital to the war effort. At this California pilot plant, meat, fruit, and other foods are successfully dehydrated to one-fifth their former size. This allows one ship to carry the load of many to our allies and troops abroad. Classes in mechanical designing prepare many girls to take jobs in nearby aviation plants and shipyards. College hospitals give training to girls who will help meet the demand for nurses at the fighting fronts. Classroom training in all phases of military theory and practice is given by experienced Army officers to ROTC students who are anxious to learn the latest methods of warfare. They learn to identify landmarks and relief maps built to scale and to quickly compute firing distances. The Coast Artillery Department uses complete range finding and firing equipment. Cadets learn how to handle rifles and pistols, how to assemble machine guns, how to load 75 millimeter guns, and to operate heavy coast artillery. These cadets will be fully trained when they are called to duty. Texas Aggies have gone all out for war. 6,000 ROTC cadets trained the year round for all branches of the Army. The Chemical Warfare Unit and Gas Mask Drill practices under possible wartime conditions in the gas chamber. Cadets now learn all fundamentals of fighting from veterans of many battles. Conversion to war is being made complete. These are our college men today. Hardened bodies, technically skilled, fully trained, graduating into a world at war. Mm -hmm.